Okay, hello, and welcome to this update. It is uh, 12.15 a.m. We're going to talk about some more unusual weather going on. Here you see uh, what is going on in Wilmington right now. They're getting quite a thunderstorm. There's still severe weather ongoing uh, throughout parts of the country right now. Uh, in the Carolinas now, it has moved into the Carolinas. So there's been some pretty vivid lightning. Uh, you can see it's pouring there in downtown Wilmington. Um, you can see the lightning there. Uh, it's uh, quite frequent and vivid. And again, this is February. This is not the summertime. It's February 16th right now. So it's very unusual to see this going on. And we have to talk about it because uh, some, some of the most unusual weather I've ever seen. And you can see what's going on there in Wilmington. So they're getting quite a heavy thunderstorm right there with frequent lightning. Um, and uh, this is uh, what the uh, lightning detection looks like right now. So this is the cell that's over Wilmington right now. Uh, it's producing a lot of lightning. But look offshore. I mean, this is producing so much lightning. I put on the AM radio, and you can hear the lightning on the radio from here. Uh, so this is this is quite an... And you got very warm water, up, so this is not surprising uh, when you see all this lightning. Uh, look at this. This is just incredible. I, this is February. Look at all this lightning. Let's look at it. That's pretty crazy. That is pretty crazy. I'm speechless because, uh, I mean, this is... We're talking... It's February now, all right? Why are we getting this in February? So, this is the craziness that's going on. So, again, severe thunderstorm. It's like a severe thunderstorm, anyway, hitting a Wilmington. So, let's... uh. Let's take a look at the latest observations here and the latest with the severe weather. Go to the weather and hazards map again, and we'll, uh, we'll also look at the radar and stuff as well. We still have these. I don't know if this actually refreshed, because this severe thunderstorm warning is that this is not refreshed. Nope. All right, so apparently this is not refreshing. That's nice. Okay, we'll have to. I want to show you what's going on there. So you can see the rain approaching. By the way, this is the radar here. Again, this is the horrible radar that the Weather Service has. Why did it just take me to Alaska? Oh my God, what is going on? So let's uh, let's go to the uh, car. We'll have to go here. Let's, all right, here we go. So. Red, tornado warning in effect for this area here that's west of Wilmington. Various severe th severe thunderstorm warnings in effect um, as well. This is the radar, so we'll just take a look and see what's going on in the radar here. Very, very unusual to see this. Maybe this radar will work, or is it going to take... All right, here we go. So uh, here you go. Uh, here's where these heavy cells are uh, right along the coast. And uh, this is all heading in our direction, some of this. A piece of this will be... So it looks like eastern North Carolina, Wilmington, uh, right now, looks like they are going to be getting into the severe weather soon. Look at this. This is only going to get worse than Wilmington uh, for them. Uh, so this is quite an uh, extensive severe weather outbreak. Um, uh, it is quieted down in Florida, but now the action is in the Carolinas. Let me look at another radar here. The um, This radar here as well. Pull this up and get this in here. Okay, so here we go. Look at all the snow on the northern end of this. Then upstate, we've got the ice in parts of uh, Pennsylvania. And then go south of that, all this heavy rain and severe weather. It looks like we're going to get into some of this uh, thunderstorm activity uh, because you can see some really heavy rain all throughout uh, into the, into the mid-Atlantic here, Maryland, down into uh, Virginia. Some really heavy rain here, um, very heavy rain, and this these are thunderstorms here for sure. Uh, and heading down, this is this is the severe weather. And look at this, you even got some purple here um, on these cells that are west of just west of Wilmington, They're probably hitting Wilmington right now. Uh, but this is uh, what it looks like, and I tell you, this is pretty crazy stuff. Um, I'll put it in motion here get an idea of what's happening here. So these cells offshore are just insane. Just insane. 
So you can see it's going to start moving in our direction here. Um, so let me go back to the uh, back to the weather and hazards map here. Look at this here, because this is uh, we are witnessing things that I've never seen before, and this is like I said, this is what we're going to start seeing as a deal with climate change. So I want to show you what's happening here um, in that area here, because this is sort of moving in our direction. Some of this heavy heavy precipitation here in the eastern North Carolina area. And uh, let's see, Wilmington. All right, so they got the, let's see, it's 69 degrees there with a dew point of 68, very humid uh, air. Uh, that's what's fueling these storms. So you get this very humid air, and then um, behind it, you've got the cold air. And so when we go into um, the south here, uh, and this is the deep south here, uh, you know, temperatures in the 20s. In, in Louisiana, temperatures in the 20s. I mean, it's never supposed to get this cold there. That's that's unheard of. In Texas, look at this. We got here? 18 at Port Arthur, Texas, right now. 20 at Galveston Bay entrance. 21 at Gal. This is his. It's never gets this cold in Texas. It's not supposed to ever get this cold in Texas. Houston, 16 degrees. And here's what makes it worse. Um, is not only do you have this very unusually cold air over Texas, we have a blackout in Texas right now. We have 4,320,801 people that are out of power right now in Texas. So there is a blackout. You can see ERCOT, level three alert. Load shedding is ongoing because the what has gone on is they have not planned for this amount of cold. They did not anticipate that there was going to be such a large power consumption of power. So what we have is, including Galveston, is completely out. Uh, these people without power, there's no heat. Um. People are going to freeze to death. Look at Harris County alone. Let's, let's go to that Harris County one. Where it was. I saw it up there. Now, where did it go? Fort Bend. I mean, I did see Harris County. I don't know where it went. There it is. 361,172. I mean, this is... Incredible. The whole state is being affected by this. Um, you know, if you go to KQ, which I've been watching, they're talking about this. And look, this is even affecting the western parts of the state. I mean, the whole state is being affected, except for the extreme northern part and the extreme eastern part. It, 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 this is a major disaster, and a major disaster was declared um, in Texas right now uh, because of this. And I want to show you... Um, this clip here. I was watching a live stream. We're going to play this here, and you're going to see the power go out. This is in Kyle, Texas. So watch this. You're going to see the power go out. There it goes. They just shut it off. So uh, this is all. It's all going out because it's being shut off um, because of this power shortage going on in Texas right now, as as we speak. Um, this is historic. Um, Louisiana too is 109,987. Is probably the same reason. Maybe maybe this is weather related, um, but it's just incredible that this is happening. Um, and this is all part of what happens when we have this crazy climate going on, you know. And we'll go to uh, we're going to look at some Texas here information on Twitter in a minute. But you can see, look at these temperatures. Let me. Um, Get rid of this warning layer here. This warning layer is just too much. So we can see the cities here. All right, and the temperatures here. And when is it ever in the teens in Houston? And they got snow on the ground. And then if you go further north into places like Dallas, it's even worse. Austin, 14 degrees. I mean... This is unheard of, this kind of cold. And it just goes all the way, even Corpus Christi, 28 degrees. All the way in Brownsville, it's 32 degrees. I mean, 
This is crazy. This is crazy. Absolutely crazy to see Cole just deflected, just do south. And look at Dallas. Dallas, they're in the single digits in Dallas right now. It's seven degrees. Um... I mean, Texarkana, five degrees. I mean, uh, this is insane. Louisiana is in the teens. I mean, it's never supposed to get that cold there. So th this is the kind of thing. Don't you go a little further north? It's not quite. It's still unusual, though. Oklahoma City is negative two right now. So this is a historic uh, Arctic outbreak. It's just historic. And, uh, you know, I've never seen anything like this, the storm. And, and it just shows the jet stream and how screwed up the jet stream is right now. And I'm going to draw this out again. The jet stream is literally going like this, going straight down from the Arctic, down to the down into the Gulf of Mexico, into Texas. And it's going up. On the East Coast, like this. Very, very unusual to see this kind of trough that would develop. And so you could see all the heat coming around the ridge here that's heading up into Florida. All right? And then you throw in the cold air, which is coming down from, from literally from the Arctic Circle all the way down. All the way down here. And it's being confined to this area right here. This small area of the con I mean, it, this, why this is happening is because the jet stream is all waved, uh, wavy. And, and it's not, this is not supposed to happen. The jet stream is what keeps the atmosphere in order. And so we're not seeing things in order right now. What we're seeing is complete disorder. Um, yes, we've seen Arctic outbreaks before. Of course we have seen Arctic outbreaks before, but the unusual thing about this one is, is in the way it is coming down, in the way uh, this is coming down. And normally, you have an Arctic outbreak. You have the cold air come down, and it spreads out over a large area, usually like this, all right? So because it spreads out, it gets it gets more diffuse. So instead of having this ex area of extreme cold right here, it spreads out and therefore it's not as, you know, strong because it spreads out and it, the, the cold air absorbs more heat because it's over a larger area. So it's not as severely cold. But because it's in this small area, it is severely cold in this area right here. And uh, that's why you're getting this now in the upper Midwest. They're used to the cold, but not down in Texas. Um, and uh, that's that's what's unusual about this whole thing. Uh, so let me get all this out of here, and we will again look at the jet stream here, which uh, we'll use this instead. So we'll go, uh, let's see, I think we can, uh, yeah, here we go. I'll change this to, oh, let's go to the jet stream height here. So here's the problem. Look at that sharp trough right here this is a very small but very sharp trough that's come down let's go even a little higher than this let's go even a little higher it shows it up even better so it's a very sharp trough that's occurring here so you can see that sharp trough and so the cold air is just kind of stuck right in here and that is a concern uh, because it keeps it confined to this area. And unfortunately, you can see as we head, and it's going to take a while for it to pull out. Hopefully by the end of the week, it moderates a little bit for them because it spreads out over a larger area. But right now it's confined to this small area, which makes it really unusual to see. And, uh, I've got to say, I've never seen anything quite like it. 
Um, it, it's it's incredible. It really is incredible to see. Uh, and uh, like I said, they're just not used to this cold. And I mean, if we're going to go back to some observations here, and I'm sure that you're going to get at some of these buoys here. Um, here, uh, 34. Does it have the water? Oh, these are, yeah, this is a buoy. Does it have a water temperature here? Because the water temperatures are probably in the 70s. Water temperatures in the upper 60s. So you're putting water, you're putting such cold air over such warm water. This could actually create some interesting weather right on the Gulf. Uh, I'm sure you're going to get some sea smoke, but there are going to probably be other things going on too. I'm surprised some uh, convective activity doesn't start popping up over there because uh, it's incredible. Obviously, we have the, thund the thunderstorms going on over here. Um, but you have this uh, just unusual situation here. And let me overlay the radar on here. So maybe it will show if there are any echoes. I don't see anything here. Let me look at the satellite for this area. And we don't seem to have satellite. All right. I want to go look at the Gulf of Mexico. So I guess we got to, yeah, Gulf of Mexico. And let's see. Oh, it looks like we don't have satellite information. That's nice. Well, what I can do is I can look at the motors. Maybe we can take a look and see what it looks like over there. And uh, this is just such unusual weather. Uh, yeah, you can sort of see this was all oh, right. I want to went a little later, uh, but yeah, you can sort of see the effect that's occurring. So it's literally going over this warm water, and it's just gonna. They're probably gonna be snow squalls offshore, probably offshore in the Gulf of Mexico, and there could be lightning with them. It could be lightning. Um, I'd like to see some more radar from that area, but again, it it's just very unusual to see. And I'm going to go to the weather service now, and we're going to get the Houston weather service up here. Oh, there might be a weather service in Galveston. Uh, and these, these conditions are just incredible. So 21 at Galveston right now. Northwest wind is 17 gusting to 21. This is Galveston. I mean, th that's like... I think normal temperatures around this time of the year are supposed to be 60s and 70s. So you're talking 40 degrees below normal uh, kind of deal. Now here's the radar. I'm surprised it's not showing anything up on the over the... Uh, I'm really surprised nothing's showing up out over the, uh, the Gulf of Mexico. They're not getting snow squalls. I'm really surprised. I bet they are, but it probably is too far for the radar to pick up. But uh, th that's incredible. So to see this happening is just absolutely crazy. And then the power situation um, is, 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 is insane. ERCOT, all right, um, which is, if you look up ERCOT, this is the, uh, this is how bad it is right now. The ERCOT grid has collapsed in exactly the same manner as the old Soviet Union. So they call the electrical reliability, whatever these people are, they failed miserably. And these people at ERCOT and the folks who are in charge of the generation that has failed, they were not prepared. They had plenty of chances to prepare. All right, this top level uh, emergency right now going on in Texas because ERCOT has issued an EEA level three because electric demand is very hard now and supplies can't keep up. Uh, and therefore they are doing load shedding, but they're, this is a very, very bad, they say it's historic ERCOT peak demand, but they knew this coal was coming. They knew it was coming. They knew they needed to protect generation because sometimes some of the pipes may not have been insulated and froze up. That's what I'm hearing. Um, they failed miserably. So the folks at ERCOT and the folks uh, at uh, these generating plants should face criminal charges because people are going to die from this. They're going to freeze to death. Uh, there's no. They've shut down all the mass transit in Texas. So if you don't have a car and you need to go someplace warm, forget it. You're on your own. 
you know. So, uh, you know, this is this is this is a major disaster. So, I figured I'd, I'd update you on that. And this crazy, crazy uh, 2021 is getting off to an even crazier start than 2020, folks. Anyway, I really hope that the people of Texas will survive this uh, because it's very. You know, um, and do whatever it if if you're freezing right now in these kind of conditions out there right now that you're experiencing. Let me go back to the observation map, and it won't go. It won't take me back. Of course not. Oh, they really wrecked the weather service site, by the way. They really wrecked the weather service site. Let's take a look at a place like Dallas, Texas. All right, seven degrees. All right, people are freezing. If you are in that situation where you are freezing. In your own home. And you can get know some place that's warm. Such as an office building that has power or whatever. And you need to go in there to survive. You have every right to actually break in there. Uh, so you can survive. Uh, that's how dangerous this kind of cold is. Uh, so uh, uh, I hope people, you know, Texas, you know, people need to do whatever it takes right now. And right now this you're on your own doesn't cut it. Gregory Abbott has failed once again uh, as governor. <laughs> What do you expect? He's a Trumper. Um, I hate to bring politics into it, but this is the mentality in Texas. They have this tough mentality. Well, Mother Nature has shown that Texas, she can break Texas too. All right, She can break anyone she wants. You need to repair and you need to respect that. So this is a very, very dangerous situation in Texas right now. Um, and uh, we can just put up Texas again and you see... Uh, Frozen wind turbines. Texas is colder than Alaska right now. Uh, people are freezing in their own homes. City of Abilene was forced to shut off water. So they have no water now. This is, uh, this is unbelievable what is going on right now. They had the chance to prepare. The folks at, 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 at this ERCOT here. You all should be ashamed of yourselves. And as far as I'm concerned, you all need to face criminal charges for your criminal neglect. Uh, you had plenty of chances to prepare for this. And the fact is that you have not prepared, even though you had plenty of chances to do that. And uh, right now, I would say we are pretty much experiencing a blackout in Texas right now. So um, it's not acceptable what's going on. And uh, something needs to be done. Um, and like I said, Governor Abbott, which we'll also look up right now. Gregory Abbott, this guy right here. Doesn't even have anything on his site right now. Um, sends additional resources, nothing about the power outage situation. If I was the governor... I would mobilize the National Guard to immediately take over all the electrical facilities in the state and restore power. Cut this crap out. People are going to die. Have a great night, everybody. And let's pray for the people in Texas right now. And, you know, because this is a deadly situation.